Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So it's been a while since we've been doing some reloading. And in fact, today we're not even reloading. We're doing some, or I am doing some repair work on a mistake I made. I had about uh, three or 400, uh, 223 I put together and I didn't have my lock ring completely closed on my die and I had about, I set them too shallow by about 40 thousandths. Uh, so today I'm doing some repair work of my own mess up and uh, yep, I will admit that. And you know, some guys will be like, well, you should take them all apart. You should do do this or do that. And uh, like I've said before in, in these videos, as reloaders, we all have different methods and uh, reasoning for our madness and today's no different. Um, I know that these are all measuring, like I said, about 40 thousandths too shallow. So I'm uh, resetting them. I'm checking them with the Reading dial indicator or the instant indicator from Reading. Uh, so I'm actually 100% checking these in lieu of measuring all of them with the caliper. I've got that set up. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a bit. But, uh, and then I'm gonna just answer some questions that I've got uh, through email and messenger and things like that here at the end. So stick around, let's get these fixed up and uh, talk about reloading. All right, guys, like I was explaining at the beginning of the video, I'd inadvertently set these uh, overall lengths uh, about 40 thousandths uh, too shallow. And you know, these kind of mistakes are not typical, but uh, you know, even the seasoned reloader makes mistakes sometimes. And in lieu of tearing all of these apart, I'm going to repair them uh, with the BL550 here. And basically, uh, what we have going on in each station is I have uh, in station uh, one here, uh, just my seating die. So I'm going ahead, I am seating these down uh, to get them in the specification that I want, uh, going ahead and crimping those. And then uh, finally here, uh, just so I can get a visual confirmation, I have uh, the link that I want set up uh, as a master sample. And I'm using the uh, Reading Instant Indicator to give me a plus or minus, uh, basically what I'm looking for is plus or minus about six, seven thousandths uh, for these. I'm, I'm okay with that from a case overall length. Um, so I'm using the indicator and I'm looking at each one as it goes through. And if there's anything that I'm not comfortable with, I'll pull it out. But um, everything is checking out pretty, pretty easily. So I will uh, finish these up and We'll talk about some other useful things that you can do with the BL550. Um, you know, obviously you can run run this like a progressive press with your powder measure and everything. You can seat primers, you can decap. I mean, this is basically a 550 just stripped down. It's actually become one of my favorite presses. It's, it's really a uh, utility press. Um, of all presses, you can run this as a single stage, run one station at a time. You know, there are just so many things you can do with it. I like the fact that it's a great entry level press um, for those guys that want to get into a piece of Dillon equipment. This is certainly your least expensive route, and it's completely upgradable to a 550C. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I've used some of the pieces off the 550C on this press already. Uh, for one, the ejector wire. I couldn't stand the fact when I was running this as a progressive that I'd have to reach over and pull the finished cartridge out by hand. So I put that ejector wire on. Just made it nicer from my, my perspective anyways. But uh, the other thing that's really nice about this press is it does have a removable tool head up here so you can just like on your 550s you know trim you've got some specific for sizing or whatever you can even they're just the possibilities are endless just like on the xl 750 you know i got several shell plates set up um, with different calibers you can do the exact same thing with this press as well all right, so let's talk a little bit about the 
Reading Instant Indicator that I'm using there. Um, it's a really, really nice tool to have. Um, they are, you buy them somewhat caliber specific. Uh, this one is set up for 223. And the functions of it are, are pretty cool. You can do several different things with it. I'm gonna grab the box here and kind of show you what I'm talking about. But uh, the coolest thing that I like about it is checking uh, headspace. And I'm just gonna hold this up here. Inside is a uh, basically what I would call like a master sample of a 223. Um, so this is gonna be at absolute zero, uh, perfect headspace. You'll set up your indicator and use the appropriate collar for headspace. And then you can check uh, your headspace on the fly, which uh, is, is pretty good. I think I just, uh, let me just redo that one here real quick. Bad thing about talking and reloading, I shouldn't say I'm reloading, doing some repair work, but uh, you know, headspace, if you're a precision rifle shooter, uh, you worry about headspace. Uh, how tight you want that to uh, set in the chamber. And that's how you would set up your sizing die based off that headspace that you're trying to achieve. And you can measure that with the indicator. Um, the other function this will do, it will check bullet seating depth. And that's what I'm doing uh, right now. So I set, what I did was I placed uh, one of the cartridges in there at the appropriate OA overall length that I wanted, uh, set my indicator up to zero, and now I'm just basically looking for that plus or minus six, seven window uh, away from my datum zero, so I'm using the indicator for that. Uh, the other thing that you can do with it <clears throat> is you can check your uh, base to ogive, your case length, I mean anything that can make contact uh, with whatever uh, call it that you have in, you can take a measurement from. Uh, I really just enjoy the fact that I'm uh, measuring all these 100% and I'm not running them across the caliper. And I know that every one that I'm dropping into my bin is within the parameters uh, that I set. Now you can order this one of two ways, with the gauge or without. Um, some guys are hung up on, you know, wanting the best of the best as far as gauges are concerned or, uh, you know, wanted a digital readout. You can do all of that. All, any kind of typical uh, indicator gauge will just, it just locks in here with a set screw. So you can use whatever, whatever one that you want to use. <laughs> all right, guys, that's going to wrap this video up. Uh, pretty simple, just doing some repair work. Um, working through all that uh, myself, but I thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride. Just highlight the BL550 again. What a great utility press this is. And it's uh, the most economical Dylan press to get into, and you can fully upgrade it uh, into a complete 550C. Love this press. Um, also highlighted the Redding Instant Indicator a little bit. Um, if, you're, if you're like me and you like double checking and getting some accurate measurements and things like that, uh, the Redding Instant Indicator, you know, it can be used Wherever you can put a standard die, you can pretty much put an indicator to check whatever you want, whether it's based ogive, uh, seating depth, uh, headspace, you can do it all with the indicator. Uh, one quick question that, I, that I've got a lot over the last couple months, and it's because we have a lot of new reloaders getting into the hobby, which is fantastic. Uh, and that question is, how do you develop the overall length of the case that, you, that you're making? For example, uh, I've got several questions on nine millimeter. And uh, the question kind of starts off with, you know, I've, I've checked, you know, all the factory ammo I've had, everything is set at 1.15. Uh, all the books show 1.15 case overall length. And the, uh, I'm running the brand X bullets. And a lot of times it's, it's commercial cast bullets that um, they're cheap and you can buy them in bulk. And a lot of uh, new guys getting into the hobby are attracted to it because they're looking to save some money into reloading, which we could go into another whole topic on that if it's even uh, saves you any money. But uh, I've been referring a lot of guys back to one of the first videos that I put out. And yes, it's poorly lit. The editing's not that great, but the concept is what I'm trying to get these guys to understand and gals is that you need to develop your overall length first. And that's my opinion. 
uh, you develop that based off the tightest chamber for the firearm that you're loading to. Um, in that video, uh, the example I was giving was uh, my CZ um, a TSO, real tight chamber. I was using uh, Acme 124 round nose. Those uh, particular bullets, I had to seat at a depth of 1.09 um, for it to fit uh, my chamber seat, spin freely. Um, so I knew that I was, um, you know, dataming that case where it was supposed to in the chamber. Uh, so a lot of guys are struggling with that because they just see in their load manuals, uh, 124 grain round nose, and they're assuming that because their factory ammo was at 1.15, the load manual says 1.15, that everything should be at 1.15. And that's clearly not the case. Um, so developing that overall length is something that you got to grasp and you got to understand. Um, starting out, and I always suggest this, is getting uh, components that are spelled out in, in your reloading manual. Sierra is a great example. Uh, they have load data for all of their, their particular bullets they sell, along with what powders and primers are using. And it's, it's a really good resource and it really uh, will help you build um, good recipes with, with their bullets um, based off the data that's there and everything works very well. But still, going back and check, making those checks uh, with the plunk test, and I don't even really like to call it the plunk test because I can never hear the actual plunk. I just push it and make sure it spins freely. That way I know I'm, I'm seated correctly on the case mouth. So um, I've been pushing a lot of guys back to that video. Maybe we'll revisit it at some point and do it a little bit more detailed, but uh, conceptually it's all there and that's everything that you need to know. But um, I love the questions, keep them coming. If you guys like these videos, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. You can stay up to date with everything we have going on. I've also got a lot of questions about uh, what's up with all the off-road stuff? Why are we? Why are you doing that and not reloading? Well, uh, again, you know that this time of the year we're getting into the winter months. We kind of transition from outside to inside, and then I'll focus more on reloading. Um, however, uh, YouTube is making it more and more difficult uh, every time they update their guidelines to do content like this. We have to be very careful what information we give out, what we don't give out. I know a lot of guys are are moving to different platforms and things like that. Uh, my intent is to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm gonna stay within the guidelines. YouTube's a great platform. They've been very good to us. And we're, we're gonna keep doing what we're doing. And I'm hoping that some of the more uh, in-depth complex stuff, if you guys have questions on that, hit me up directly. And I'll do my best to get back with everyone uh, with their questions. Um, if you, um, you know, are looking for load data and things like that, you're, you're never gonna get that from me. I would never give out uh, load recipes or, or anything that I've been successful with as far as my loads, my, my particular rounds, I would never do that. I don't think any responsible reloader would do that uh, either. You know, that's something that's part of reloading that you got to learn and develop uh, for yourself. So uh, I know that doesn't sit well with some people. I get guys that are upset with, well, why don't you just tell me what you do? Well, I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm not going to tell you how I do it uh, or give you recipe data, things like that. So um, if you're looking for that on this channel, you'll never find it here. So, uh, but until next time, guys, I uh, appreciate you all very much and uh, God bless.